Right, one. State the key equation of Green's theorem. And of course at the top it should say Green's theorem with an apostrophe S. Right, well Green's theorem says this, if you've got some closed curve, simple closed curve does not overlap itself, orientated in the positive direction, and there's some vector field operating throughout that region, where that vector field has got components P, some function of X and Y, and Q, some function of X and Y, then it says the line integral over the whole curve of f dot dr, which means of course the line integral over the whole curve of p x y dx plus taking the scalar product q x y dy is the same as the area integral throughout the area enclosed by the curve of partial q by partial x minus partial p by partial y of the area dA, or if you like, dx dy. That would be Green's theorem. Well, to the actual question, it says, evaluate this line integral over the curve made up of three parts. First, the part of the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4, starting at 2, 0, and going, so that's the first circle appearing in the first quadrant, from 2 there to 2 there followed by the y-axis from 2 down to the origin, and then by the x-axis from the origin to there. So that's the closed curve. So the area enclosed is this quarter circle. And Green's theorem would be this thing. To evaluate that over, to evaluate that line integral over the length of that curve, instead of that, you could carry out the area integral of partial this by partial x, so that would be 4x cubed plus 4xy squared minus partial this by y, there's no mention of y, so that's just 0, of dx dy. Right, so what's that then? Well, there's a 4 that can come out, so I've got 4 times the surface area, then the area integral of x cubed plus x, y squared, dx, dy. But it's a circular region, so you might as well switch to polar coordinates, where x would be r cos theta, y is r sine theta, and the area element, dx, dy, is r dr d theta. And r is going to go from 0 to 2 in the plane, and theta is going to go from 0 to pi up in 2. That's all you need to know. I've got all these parts here. I'll put that down as well. R is going to go from 0 to 2, and theta is going to go from 0 to pi up in 2, as you sweep out that area. Right, so, putting it all together then. So I'll need to change these. So I've got 4 times, I'll just put these in just now, so that's theta is going from 0 to pi up in 2, R is going from 0 to 2, and what that lot says is, I've got x is r cubed cos cubed, r cubed cos cubed x. And of course that should have said r cubed cos cubed theta. What a dumpling. Still will get sorted later. x, y, that's an r times another, r cubed. x is a single cos, but y squared would be sine squared. Of, whoops, r dr d theta. That's what you're going to evaluate instead. Right, well, you can take out some common factors here. R cubed can come out, plus that R to make an R to the power 4, and that's all the mention of R, so I could have that part there. So I've got 0 to 2 of R to the 4 dr. But for this part, I should have more room now, going from 0 to pi up in 2, but I don't actually need much room here because there's a common factor of cos that can come out of there. I've got cos theta times cos squared theta plus sine squared theta, that would come out of the bracket. The r cubed comes out, and a cos comes out, just leaving a cos squared plus sine squared, but that's just equal to 1. So all I've got there is cos theta, d theta. Right, independent of each other. So I've got 4 times, that goes back to sine, from 0 to pi up in 2, and that's 1 fifth of r to the 5, from 0 to 2. So I've got 4 times, Sine pi up in 2, that's 1, take away 0. 1 fifth of, I could have taken that out, I will do. 
One fifth of two to the five minus zero. Well, two to the five is thirty-two, and that's just one. So I've got four thirty-twos. Four thirty-twos, hundred and twenty-eight upon five, and that would be the answer. Right, there's the answer using Green's theorem. But it'd also be quite instructive to do the same thing, just using line integrals over the three portions of the curve. Much longer. Do that in a separate video afterwards, just to see if you get the same answer, 120 upon 5. Right, that's 3 part 1 anyway. Right, part 2. State the key equation in Gauss's divergence theorem. Well, that's the one that says if you've got some positively orientated surface and there's some vector field operating through it, then the surface integral of f dot n ds is equal to the volume integral of <coughs> the divergence, hence divergence theorem, of div f dv dx y dz. Now, the actual question says this. If this is the vector field, which is quite handy, because normally you get them joined together and you have to extract the vector field from the normal, having them joined together as a scalar product. But here it is extracted anyway. Find that where the surface concerned is the paraboloid z equals x squared plus y squared. That just means lots of circles getting bigger in the z direction, forming this paraboloid, this bowl shape. z equals x squared plus y squared, topped by the plane, so it's just like a bowl with a flat lid on it, at z equals 4. So that will be the region through it which you're going to integrate this. Volume integral. Right, so that means what I've got, if I call that i, what I've got then is this volume integral. I've got, I need div f. So that means differentiate the x component with respect to x. Nothing there, that'll just be y squared. Differentiate the y component with respect to y. Nothing there at all. Differentiate the z component with respect to z. Nothing there, but there's an x squared. So that's all I've got. dx, dy, dz over the volume that I've got there. Now, how are you going to gather this up through that volume? Well, there's all sorts of different ways. That flat top's awkward. In fact, that flat top <coughs> makes it perfect for cylindrical coordinates. You may well do this. You might think, well, let's gather up little rods of z first of all, because z would go from this boundary, x squared plus y squared, up to 4. So you've got all these little rods. And each of these little rods terminate in this top circle, so then you just gather them up through a circle. But gathering them up through the circle is going to make you change the polar coordinates anyway. So you'll be doing cylindrical coordinates by the back door if you do that. So you might as well just go straight for cylindrical coordinates, which just means you're using polar coordinates on the horizontal plane and then just the z components up the way. So x would be r cos theta, y would be r sine theta, but z would just be z. And the volume element, dx, dy, dz, would just be the area element in the plane, which is r dr d theta times the thickness times its height dz. And it's just getting putting that all together, thinking, now, what are the limits of all of these things? Well, z is going to go from 0 to 4. The theta is going to sweep all the way around, 0 to 2 pi. And r, which doesn't mean at any angle, that's the horizontal ray, is going to go from zero to whatever the radius of the circle is at that particular level, which is the square root. x squared plus y squared is r squared, so that's the square root of the radius. Right, so I'll put all that together then. So, any order you like, I suppose. I know two bits are going to be joined, but I'll solve that later. So, zero to two pi for that theta, zero to four for the z, and 0 to z to the power of half for the r's. And x squared plus y squared is just r squared. Times volume element r dr d theta dz. That's what I need to work out. Right, well, I can split a couple of parts. I'm going to take that theta out. 0 to 2 pi d theta, completely independent. That's a constant as far as the rest is concerned. I'll put this dz here just now 
but really it's waiting to see what this part the R's do because the R's are going to produce Z's to go into there. This is really if I'd left that nested. From 0 to Z to the half of R cubed dr. There, that's the end of all I've worked. I'm going to just tidy that up. I can do that a bit straight away. 2 pi. Can't do that because it's waiting for this. That should have been actually sitting inside of that. So I'll just have to wait just now. So from 0 to 4 of whatever this produces. There's my dz and that's going inside. So that's going to be a quarter of r to the 4 evaluated from 0 to z to the half. I think I'll put this over here. Be a bit ambitious with that space. So that's going to be, well, I could take that quarter out, make that pi up in 2, of the integral from 0 to 4 of, well, the 0 will make no difference. So what I've got is I've got the quarter already. I've got z to the half to the power of 4, so that's just z squared. z squared dz, which is going to be pi up in 2 times 1 third of z cubed from 0 to 4. The zero is not going to make any difference. I'll pop back down here again. So that means I've got pi up in 2 times a third times 4 to the power of 3 is 64. That goes 32. The two cancels. So that's going to be 32 pi upon 3 for the answer. There we go. Right, the third part of number three, some del or nabla operations. And this first one says, <coughs> find this using the operator twice, the Laplacian of this. R is just the length of R, so it's this Laplacian of this scalar field. Well, that just simply means I'm going to do the grad of it first of all, I'll produce a vector, and then I'll do div of that vector, which will just produce a scalar again, hopefully producing 12R. Right, well, first of all, I want that, I want grad of r cubed produce a vector. Well, what that means is I'm going to get this vector. I'm going to have partial of r cubed by x, partial of r cubed by y, and partial of r cubed by z for the three components. So the components are going to be differentiate that with respect to x. So that with respect to itself, because that's a function of a function, would be 3r squared, and then partial r by x. Similarly, 3r squared partial by y, 3r squared partial by z. Now, what was that? That's the length of that. To get the length of the vector, you square and add all the components. So r squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So if I take the partial of both sides with respect to x, I would have 2r, function by function, times partial by x, would be partial of this side, 2x. So partial r by x is going to be, take that across and divide, x over r. And by symmetry, the other ones will be the same, y over r, z over r. So what I've got here is, I've got 3r squared times x over r. I wish I have done that now. 3r squared times y over r, and 3r squared times z over r. So I've just cancelled them. Doesn't matter. Now, to do div of that then, grad dot, sorry, div of grad r cubed. Then that's just going to be partial of each of these added up into a single one. So it's going to be partial of that with respect to x. Well, that's 3, I'm going to just put it over here, I should tidy it up first. That's 3rx, 3ry, <coughs> and 3rz. So, differentiating that then. That's a product. So I'll have for the first one, differentiate that with respect to x. I'll we'll set it out. It's going to be a partial by partial x of 3rx plus partial by partial y of 3ry, but at least these will be symmetrical, and partial by partial z of 3rz. So I'm just going to concentrate on that first one. So that means there's a product. So I'm going to have 3r times 1 plus 3x times that plus 3x times partial r by partial x, which is x over r. Which means the other ones will be the same. That will be 3r plus 3y times y over r. And that will be 3r plus 3z times z over r. So I've got these 3r's I can gather up to make a 9r. And I've got these 
3x squared over r, 3y squared over r, all these 3 over r squared, or 3 over r's times x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So it's 9r plus 3 upon r times, but x squared plus y squared plus z squared is just r squared. So I've got 9r plus 3r, which equals 12r. And that's the first bit done. For the last bit, show that the curl of r, where r is the position vector is 0, which is pretty obvious really, since the position vector just radiates directly away from the origin. It doesn't have a curl. It's not working out properly, there's not a lot to that. Grad cross, we'll just work it out. Uh, curl of r would be i, j, k, partial by partial x, partial by partial y, partial by partial z, pretty messy, of just x, y, z. So that I've got times i, I've got partial z, I suppose I'll have to spell it all out, partial z by y minus partial y by z minus for j, unless I reverse them. I've got partial z by x minus partial x by z. And then for k, I've got, looking at them, I've got partial y by x minus partial x by y. But these things are all zero. There's no y's and z, there's no z's and y's, there's no x's, etc, etc. It's nothing take away nothing i, minus nothing take away nothing j, plus nothing take away nothing, whoops, take away nothing k. <coughs> so in the end, it's just going to be zero, 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 which means the kernel of r is just zero. And there it is.